The goal of the Christian life is union with Christ. What that means is this. It means to be with him everywhere, to find him everywhere, and to have our thoughts, feelings, and actions aligned with his. Where do we find God? Well, we don't find him. He finds us. God is all around us in everything we see. We find him in creation. Psalm 19 tells us, The heavens declare the glory of God. Now, it's easy to find God in butterflies and flowers, but what about finding him in mosquitoes, hurricanes, and poison ivy? The world is full of things that can hurt us or kill us. St. Augustine gave us a good insight that might help us to be able to see God and appreciate God in all things. And it has to do with the view of good and evil. Augustine took the view that evil is nothing, literally nothing. It is the absence of what is good. Evil may make things worthless or twisted because it is an absence of something, but it cannot take good away because evil is not a thing. It is the absence of a thing. Think of it this way. Imagine a donut. Have you ever seen a hole in, the no in a donut? No, you haven't. You can't see a hole in the donut. You only see the donut. You assume that what's missing is called a hole, but there's really nothing there. Well, Augustine had the same view about evil. He said, we've never really seen evil because it is the absence of good. Everything around it is still good. So when we have troubles and trials and we have problems, keep in mind that everything we're seeing is still something good. Everything we can see is good, even things that we think of as evil. So underneath, all things declare the glory of God. God's glory is shown in the ordinary things of life. All things can contain a message to us from God if we look. Nothing that we see in this life is meaningless. All, the meaning of all things points us ultimately back to God. God is constantly explaining to us the meaning of our lives, if only we will look. So how do we see the meaning in things? Well, by two lenses. One of them is through the Word of God. The more we study the Word, the more we're going to be able to understand the meaning of everything that happens to us. And the closer we draw to the Holy Spirit, the more the Spirit will be pointing out in the ordinary things of life, meaning and purpose. And here is God's meaning to us. If you want to know the message of life, the meaning of life, here it is. It's embedded in all things. It's this. God says, I love you and you are loved. And he says, furthermore, I am strong enough to support you. Not only do the good things in life tell us this, but the bad things as well. God's glory is shown in our struggles because every struggle we have becomes an opportunity for growth. Temptation. Our temptations are really invitations. Lust is an invitation to charity. Anger is an invitation to forgiveness. Fear is an invitation to courage. And greed is an invitation to simplicity. Envy is an invitation to charity. Every temptation becomes an opportunity to, be glory, to see the glory of God. Our persecutions are also opportunities. Being hated is an invitation to forgiveness. Being overlooked is an invitation to humility. Being slighted is an invitation to learn simplicity. Our sufferings are soul-defining, and therefore they can declare to us the glory of God. Grief teaches us the depth of what love really is. Sickness teaches us our need for help, especially our help from God. Loneliness teaches us to value others. Tears 
clean our heart so we can laugh again. Philippians 4.8 tells us the secret. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. How do we practice God's presence? Look for him in the ordinary places of life. Every moment of every day, there is a path and a meaning that can lead you to see the glory of God. Savor the moments of life, practicing mindfulness, and see God's hand in them. Don't through rush through your meals. Eat them slowly and appreciatively, giving thanks for the people who gave you that meal. Don't rush through walks, but take them slowly and appreciate the joys around you. Don't rush through friendships either, but savor every moment you have with a friend. Give thanks to God for all things. Philippians 5.18 tells us this. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus.